How did that happen? That's why you were I don't know. I just sat next to you. I know. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission for the Town of Weathersfield. Date August 7, 2018. Mm -hmm. Clerk helped me with a uh, roll call. Chairman Harley. Here. Uh, Vice Chairman Margietta. Not here. Uh, Roberts is here. Hughes. Not here. Oikel. Here. Hammer. Here. Omicky. Nope. Dean. No. Allard. Here. Edwards. Here. Antoniak. Here. Silva. Here. All right. So we have uh, eight participants this evening and everybody is in the game. Um, item 3.1 is a CGS 824 review for the purchase of Kaisia Farms. Would you like to join us and describe what's going on? It just sounds just like a weird echo. Weird echo? Hey, hey, hey. Should I, should I shut it off and turn it on again? Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, I guess everybody knows. Is this on? Oh, now it is. Sorry. It's still weird. Yeah, it's still weird, but go ahead. Oh, okay. That sounds better. Um, here tonight to talk about the Keisha Farm. The town council voted at a special meeting. Maybe better in? without the microphone. Hmm? Do you want? It might be better without the microphone. Yeah. How's this? Is that better? Yeah, definitely. Better. You're fine. Okay. Try again. Sure. Um, Town Council is referring for an 824 review to planning and zoning, the um, future purchase of the Keisha Farm. They uh, worked with negotiations with the uh, seller over the past several months and um, are now at the point where we're ready to start the process to go to the different town reviews and approvals as we line this project up to go to the voters in November for the November election. So it will be a referendum question as um, that is where our target date is. So what we have here this evening is the Keisha Farm. It's the properties that are on both sides of Highland Avenue. I believe you have a small map at your place. And with the larger map here, it identifies the property owned by uh, Keisha. It shows the uh, Property, there's a sliver of property that's adjacent to the Highcrest School. Then the property across the street is the large lot and also the property lot with the house on it. So there are four different parcels that the town is actually looking to purchase that total approximately altogether um, approximately 33 acres. So that's what the council is looking at. What else do I need to tell you about it? This property has been identified by our Conservation Commission as one of the prime upland farmlands that we've been looking at for a long time. And when it came on the market, Council moved forward to make some decisions and voted to look at acquiring this property. The Conservation Commission, this, this property is the last large property that is um, in what we call the upland, it's not down in the meadows, but it's in prime development land, and the council is looking to use this land for future recreational purposes, open space, and municipal use. So that's kind of that's what they're looking at at this point in time. And looking at it with our review process, we start here with planning and zoning, talk to you about the importance that it is to the town and then if we should get a favorable review, continue to move forward. There would be a public hearing set up for residents to have an opportunity to come out and speak on it. Because of trying to meet the deadlines with election to get on the ballot for November, it's a tight window to get through. The, there's a council meeting August 20th, and we have to do the public hearing before September 6th 
to meet the time deadline to be on the ballot in November. So those are some of the things that we're working with to get this lined up to move forward. As um, part of the process of purchasing the farm, um, as I said earlier, it's located, the addresses are 303 and 310 Highland. And um, really, I'm here to answer your questions to make sure that we cover whatever issues you may have in regard to this property. George? Yeah. Um, the Weathersfield needs, as well as open space, it could use it in uh, residential areas in the western side, southern side of the city, but uh, this being near a school, uh, do we need recreate more recreational land and why? Could you being special <laughs> for, uh, Yeah, I could speak as the director of Parks and Recreation. Right. Um, the, um, we definitely need more um, recreational space in town, particularly athletic fields has been one of our um, more recent needs. In the last couple of years, we've added additional um, athletic field sports to, the, um, to what the children are playing in town now. And we've basically used everything that's anywhere near being flat to what we've got in town. And I say near being flat because we're, there are some places where we are that really are not flat, but you can um, kick a soccer ball or something. It may not quite go straight, but you can certainly do that. And with the, um, we added both field hockey and lacrosse in the last two years. And that has gotten us beyond max in our fields. We are, um, we are de desperately in need of fields because I had to meet with the different of our different representatives from our sports groups to talk about everybody has to give up a little and they have to shear a lot because we're, we're out of land. So the, um, the future use of this land would be a big help in meeting the needs that we have today. All future sports coming on. You, you never know what's going to come out, you know. I've seen more certain British sports coming up uh, on the uh, TV at times now, more than I've ever seen until this year. Yeah, there's a, and surprisingly, the, the kids are picking and choosing and playing, you know, all year long now. It's not just you play one sport or maybe pick up another one, but they're looking to play when uh, hopefully the weather's nice outside. And we are just maxed out. We've, we had a, we've put fields on top of fields at this point in time. Okay. Thank you, because we've always had the problem going way back to my Yeah, we, we've always put fields on top of fields, but now I, before we only used to do maybe different seasons, they would be different fields. We're doing fields on top of fields in the same season. Because the field sizes, unfortunately, they're not all standard that you could, you could put one lacrosse field. You can't put a boy's lacrosse field on top of a girl's lacrosse field um, because the dimensions are different. You, you, what do you see the use of it prior to maybe utilizing it for athletic fields? Well, I would think we would look at it. It's currently farmland. We would certainly look at, at keeping it that way for the time being is we, we would have to go through a process to determine how best to look at the property and develop it. So I think while that's in place, I've already talked with our maintenance, our physical services director about it would be a little similar to what we've done with the Wilkes Farm property, where we would look at it, we would maintain it, we'd pretty much keep it as open space and then determine what else we could use it for without you doing. You wouldn't use it for farming then or something? We, we, could, we could look at it. We would certainly look at that. We, we do that down at the Wilkes property now, and we would certainly look at doing that again if it, if it made sense to do that, yes. I'm less than familiar. Wilkes, uh, they, you do use it, and they do hay it, okay? Yep, they, are, they do hay it. That's what they want to do, I think. Yes, they're still doing, they're still doing that, yes. Anybody else? Um, could you confirm for me where the uh, <clears throat> the set aside for a half acre sure. is going to take place? Can you hear me? Is this okay? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's a, a row of houses here on Collier, and as you're coming down, 
we would look at right next to this li this line and come right in this corner. Okay. So the building lot next to the last house on Collier. Yes. Okay. Um, so you answered the one question that was in my mind, which was, have we done an assessment of the need for the property in terms of our intent of its use? Um, you know, even in the conservation and development, um, it talks about prioritizing, um, identifying the priorities when it comes to creating facilities that the town is going to have to someday maintain uh, versus conservation land, which is just buy it for that one particular purpose. And from that answer comes opportunities to obtain grant funds from other folks, right, including the state of Connecticut, which if I remember correctly, and I could completely mis misremember, honestly, but it's my understanding that the grant that we got to help us with Wilkes, in fact, insisted that it be open space and only open, or cons conserved for open space only, right? You can't put any recreational facilities on those. So I guess that's why I'm asking, has the town done those studies to know exactly what it wants? And it sounds like no. So how do you fund the whole thing? Is it all gonna be bond? Um, the, the question was, how do we fund when we're ready to get, uh, to develop the property? Is Well, even to buy the property. Oh, to, even, to buy okay. it. To buy the property, um, the council is. Um, we're going through all the. We're we're going through all the numbers right now, and we'll be looking at a way to do it to bond it over a period of years to purchase it with municipal funds. So that's what the council has uh, has said that they're looking to do at this point in time. We're not looking to apply for a grant for state funds because that will come with conditions that we can't use it for any active purposes. You could use it for passive, which is currently what the Wilkes for, farm is for, but not for active use. And because of the need that we see in town, we do wanna, we wanna reserve the ability to, to do it for active. Okay. So that's currently what we're looking at today. And, and the public meeting that you will have um, concerning the bond um, ordinance will describe that for people. I guess I'm just assuming that people will have differences of opinion on whether they should vote for it or against it, depending on what your intentions are to use it. I'm sure that's gonna be the case, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I would agree with that. And I think we're gonna, again, look to save for municipal uses. Council has said recrea recreation use, uh, the possibility of future athletic fields. Um, and open space. So it's kind of going to be looked at in three different ways from what their intent is. Thank you. Um, Rich, did you start the. No, not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Has the land been surveyed for toxic or for, I mean, has the town surveyed it for any, you know, human waste, toxic waste, or any chemical waste before they purchase it? Not yet, but that's part of the purchase agreement that prior to doing any of that, we're going to do our environmental due diligence and um, confirm everything out there. So there, there will be um, a series of things done prior, and that's all going to be set up as part of this process. Uh, when you refer to uh, active uses that the town wants to reserve the, the, uh, for the potential of this property, what what kinds of specific uses is the council looking at that meets within the definition of that term active uses? Active uses is um, is is it would be one one way to look at it would be athletic fields that are or, that are organized for sports activities. That's an active use. A passive use might be flying a kite or walking in the park. Um, so an active use is coming in and um, having some potential, having some facilities on the property that are going to contribute to that active use. A lot of it is sports fields. It, it could be a playground. That's an active use. Um, I would say that those are the kinds of things that we might be looking at in some terms. They, they've said recreational use. They, so it's... Um, 
the active piece of recreational use is a lot of athletic fields and children's playing areas. Those are the kinds of things I would envision. Uh, then to confirm, that term active use does not contemplate, for example, the resale of the land or the development of the land for uh, residential, industrial, commercial uses? That has not come up in any of our discussions. Is that in, in any way contemplated by the, uh, you know, the, the aim to purchase this property? Again, I, the conversations that I have been involved with, it, it has not come up. Council has always just stated uh, what I've said earlier is the recreational use, the future athletic fields. So that part of it hasn't come up for de developing to that, that nature. And the recreational use or playing field use and so forth, those kinds of uses are not uh, within the scope of uh, eligibility for use of uh, state funds, for state grant funds for this purpose? Not the open space funds that have been available in the past. Most of them are for the um, preservation of open space and pass what, what they, the state uses the words passive recreation. Tom, in the past, um, the STEEP, the Small Town Economic Assistance Program, has been successfully used by municipalities to assist in the development uh, of athletic fields on municipal properties, but the program that we use to acquire Wilkes um, would not um, be accessible for this project. So there, so there are funds out there, or there have been historically, whether that continues in the future remains to be seen. Yeah. Well, my, my chief concern is uh, that this, this you know, purchase would not be you know, a reservation using town funds to support uh, you know, uh, residential, commercial, or industrial development. No, that's not how this is being drafted and prepared, no. Yeah, that's my chief concern. Thank you. All right. Richard. What are the green lines on the map that we're looking at? <coughs> the drainage easements? Uh, there is a, I believe the green line that runs along the north of the property is a MDC easement. There are yellow easements running uh, off of the CLNP property to the right. Um, mm -hmm. So those are uh, electric utility lines. Um, so those are the those are the uh, utility easements that encumber the property. Are there wetlands on this? I think they're down yep. kind of toward the yeah the north yes. end. Yep, north uh, northeast corner. There's a finger of wetlands which, um, at least on the town wetlands mapping, comes all the way out to Collier. It probably comes out of a drainage pipe and then continues to the east to a much larger uh, wetland corridor, which I think is part of Collier, the Collier Brook, um, which goes and covers a portion of the Country Club property and then comes around the side of uh, Incarnation Church. It's part of a pretty significant wetland corridor through there. Okay, so that kind of rules out some of that as far as active recreation. Yeah, so by the time you take the half acre building lot out of it um, on the northwest corner, um, there's not a lot over there to, you know, that might, may end up being open space dedicated for that purpose or some sort of small recreational um, facility. But the majority of the usable land is where the farm fields have historically occupied the property. Yeah, I mean, it, the half acre, I guess they're going to need because the MDC easement would go through the middle of the house if it was a regular size lot. Yeah, so it might end up having to be a rear lot or something like that. They're going to have to work around that utility easement. Are we buying the house at 303? Yes, we are. What's the plan for that? Nothing? Um, uh, open space? Um, because it's, um, I look at it as it's the frontage on Highland. So that was, that was important to also own that piece of property, depending on how it's developed. So right now, we're not thinking that the, in the future, at some point, the house will be there. OK. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just something to keep in mind, because I know on Wilkes, they had to buy the house with separate money so that they could sell it. 
yeah. as a house. And, you know, if there's any expectation of selling that house at some point, depending on what the plans are, um, you want to keep in mind that you can't use open space bond money to buy it. And the property on the south side of Highland Street, that um, it's got a big barn and two yes. or three greenhouses. Yes. And some of the greenhouses are kind of gone. Yeah, we're going to be going in to look at them and um, evaluate those, those uh, buildings there. Yeah, I think you can evaluate them pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah pretty from much. The, they, from they the street. Have, yeah, I mean, yeah, no offense. I mean, it, it is it's serving its current purpose, but I mean, the, they're, they're, they're not gonna be anything other than a liability for the town if, if and when we buy it. Um, yeah, I mean, just also thinking out loud that the recreational uses on the south side may be limited just because of the topography and the, the width of the property, because if you, you can't even superimpose the Little League field onto that without going outside the lines. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, standing alone, it may not work. And I, I think there's also some uh, water flowing in, in that general area as well. Um, has there been any, I mean, even like back of the envelope drawings as far as, you know, what kind of parking, what kind of fields, what kind of infrastructure you know, this property could accommodate, or is it entirely the, you know, it's up for sale, we've got to buy it, and then we'll figure it out later? It was, it, it came, it was, came up, it's been a fairly quick process that it was up for, for sale, and the council had a few meetings to go ahead and, and make an offer. So uh, there's no back of the envelope drawings or anything at this time. Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm not an expert, but I've seen other towns putting in facilities and, you know, it strikes me that to do it right, you know, you're talking several million dollars probably. And I, I just, I'm just worried that the public's appetite for spending money might be exhausted after the initial purchase if it's done without any kind of planning for what the future is going to be and and what phase two will be because it you know frankly it might be the people that wanted to buy the Wilkes property because they wanted to keep it open space will be enough of the people buying this and then when you get to phase two there won't be enough interest to fund the improvements necessary to to put in the you know the active recreation fields that you know, that really are probably what, what's needed there. And I know that back a long time ago, we had a referendum on fields down in the 291 corridor, and, you know, and that didn't really go too well. So I, I'm just concerned that, you know, spending $2.4 million to buy it, you know, and then coming back to the well a few years from now saying, okay, you know, now, we're we're looking for another three to five to you know put in irrigation lights fields parking you know which would do a great help to get cars off highland street yes which is you know an, an ongoing death trap uh, yeah i mean i conceptually i like the idea of buying open space but i also like the idea of planning which i guess is why i'm here <laughs> <laughs> Rich, I think this has come to a head so quickly because the family's at a point where these decisions have to be made. I just, so you are also aware I have had conversations with developers specifically about this property. So I think um, it, the timing is such as they're deciding between selling it for development and then, or potentially selling it to the community for community purposes. So. Yeah, I mean, and I assume that's why we're buying for significantly more than the appraised value. I think that, that <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. Because of the timetable, yeah, it's our job to look at it from a planning perspective rather than a cost down the line. Uh, I think, in my interpretation of what we're, we're our statutory responsibility, 
uh, and, and hoping some of those answers will come from uh, council as we move forward to, you know, towards it get closer to, the, to a referendum. But um, from my standpoint, uh, planning standpoint, I think it's something that's a great use for the town. And um, if uh, town fathers and council feel that uh, down the line they can afford, we can afford to do this. I mean, this is their responsibility rather than mine at this point in time. Um, and I'm very much in favor uh, of the concept and approving from a planning and zoning standpoint uh, the purchase of the property. I can tell from personal knowledge that the, the lack of uh, athletic fields is t great. I mean, we just do not have it. You should see some of the kids, the younger kids, trying to play uh, baseball at Cove Park in the spring. Uh, they're up to their knees in water and trying to play, um, you know, baseball. Uh, we just do not have the fields, and I think our uh, the advancement of our kids athletically. Uh, it would be improved greatly by having these uh, additional facilities. And that's for the town council to make decisions on how these things are gonna be paid for. Uh, certainly not uh, my decision as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. All right, so, you know, my questions were um, really trying to get at what, what Rick, uh, <laughs> what you just said, <laughs> sorry. But what Rich was just saying about uh, you know, the next step um, and, and how the bond referendum is posed and, and where the public will get an opportunity to, to vet that out uh, sounds like the, the public hearing for the town council. Uh, so let me ask you, are you looking <coughs> for anything more specific than, you know, we recommend this process move forward and make a, make a positive referral on the 824 without any specificity with intent and purpose of its use, which is what I would suggest, because I can sit here and, and support the phase one, and, and I'm not so sure that I personally would support phase two, but you know, I don't want it developed either. So uh, you know, the idea of reserving open space is a good thing, and I can you know, clearly see that personally. Um, but I just, do you just want a general um, motion of approval, or are you looking for, is the town council looking for something more definitive, like how to be used? No, I, this is for the 824 referral. So it's, it's to, is, does this make sense for the town to move forward in the purchase of the property as, as we spoke of it today with? And, and generally be consistent with the conservation and development document. plan. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, All right. just, Go ahead. Uh, regarding that environmental review or environmental um, assessment that the town is going to be doing, I'm assuming the town or yes. a consultant they're going to hire, um, when will that be done? Because I know you have a very, everything's on fast track now. When will that be done and what mm. kind of information will you be getting from that besides the condition of the soils? Or, whether or not they are hazardous or not. We're, we're in the process of um, looking to uh, hire a consultant within the next couple of weeks. So it's, it is something that we're looking to do. And I can't speak specifically on everything that they're going to do. The way it was explained to me is we're going to make sure we went through this, um, through the Wilcox property where they came in and did a, what they called a phase one study to go through it and to look at the property to see if there was anything of a hazardous nature that they could determine by doing certain things. And if it needed a phase two, then we would go that far. So that, that's the way it's been explained to me. I could certainly okay. get more information, but. Okay. And just looking at the map that you had quickly, and you, I know you have a lot of experience with ball fields, athletic fields, lacrosse fields. Do you think if you were to just look at like half that property, the biggest parcel, would you say that there's, assuming soils are good and it's probably flat out there, would you say that there's a, a couple of ball fields you can get from that or, or, or one athletic facility? Have you, have you taken a look at that at all? I haven't, yeah, I have my gut, I, yeah, my gut feeling I can tell you we can get, yeah, definitely fields and parking lots. We have to get parking lots. If you look at all our facilities, we don't do well at parking lots. So we have to look at both the parking and the ball fields, but, 
Yeah, I think that we there, there's the ability, there's the potential to design something that would be really um, help meet our needs here in town for sure. And and we would look, we would go through a process to assess what are those needs and what would make the best sense to put there on this particular land, and then how would that affect the rest of the land that we have athletic fields. So it would be a would be a look at everything that we currently own and how best to use that space to get the most out of it that we possibly could. So it, I'm hearing that there's, there's some flexibility, there's a lot of different options you can have for active, for active use of that land. Because yeah. the other thing I'm thinking, and it's to Rich's point, there's, there may be some wetlands out there yep. further north on mm -hmm. the property and wooded, which you can use in a different way you can use that in a different way. That's also an active field because you can have a park or trails or something of that nature. Yeah, no, definitely. The, there, are, there is areas there and um, it's nice sort of the way it's, it's set up where, where it is. Where's the wetlands on the property? Is it down by, you mentioned in the report there was wetlands. Is it down by high crest or is it it's, higher up? It's like yeah. In this area? Well, this is the wetlands down here. It's a swamp. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see where it comes in right there. Can you show me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yes, George. Just a quick question, uh, and I talked to Peter about it today. Um, the land north of all of this is not going to be landlocked because that's a key thing that the Planning Commission has to always be concerned with in the town. We haven't had to because the town's pretty well developed, but nevertheless, it's something we always have to consider. And Peter says no, there's access, the country club has access to their land, which is pretty much wet north of this and the church has enough high land behind it so it probably would have plenty of access going out for their parking lots and so forth so that's not an issue here but I thought at one point it might be. Okay thank you. So would anybody <clears throat> unless there's some other questions would somebody like to make a, uh, a motion? Yeah, I'm gonna give a shot. I make a motion that um, we, as Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, approve the concept of the purchase of the Kissia Farms uh, property uh, to be used for the purpose of uh, recreational um, recreational purposes, uh, which are in dire we are in dire need of here in the town of Lindisfield. So, so, Dan, that would be a, a positive referral on the 8-24? On the 8-24, right. Yep. I'll second. Joe. Chairman, before we vote, I just wanted to indicate for the record I will not be participating in, in this matter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Peter, do, do we want to open this to any comments from the audience? There aren't too many out there, but uh, and it's not a public hearing. Um, we certainly could, not in, neither. Okay, but thanks for thinking of it, George. Um, so my only comment is, <clears throat> you did make a motion; it was seconded, and it has the for recreational use, active recreational use, which that's kind of what I was getting at. Do they are they looking for that? Do they just want something general that purchase of the property for whatever purposes the town may eventually decide? Kind of thing. Well, That's kind of what I was getting purpose, at. Well, it's an 824 referral, but the, the purpose uh, that was requested by the town attorney was for the reason for it was for uh, recreational purposes. Recreational purposes is what we were, I think, we were asked to look at. He also, he, he also, a, an email from um, Attorney Bradley on that subject in our packet. <clears throat> So it's probably on the last page. No. Fortunately, I, I can't find it. 
In his letter to the commission, he, they also identified recreational use, including possible future athletic fields and for open space purposes. Okay. Oh, I've made my motion to include that. Well, I think that's for the council motion, not for ours. But it is broader in statement, so it probably doesn't hurt, right? If, if you're gonna bother, so a positive referral uh, under 824 for the town council to, to proceed with purchasing the property um, for recreational purposes, including possible future athletic fields and or for open space. My motion to encompass those under 8-24. Okay. And it needs to time the development that we're referring to. Tom, would you, <clears throat> Tom, would you agree with the way I just kind of stated it? I would tend to think that the uh, the citation of the 824 referral encompasses you know, all of those uh, aspects of development. I mean, we the the referral is is essentially. I, to purchase the property, so yeah, I don't. I don't disagree, right? It, it, as long as it's all encompassing, or saying nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to a great extent, we're deferring to the uh, to the council you know, the policy considerations that will that the council will determine. And I, I do, uh, in reading through this, it does appear uh, to be not in conflict with uh, our plan of development. Okay. So um, we have a motion basically for the positive referral under 824 right. for any real use, mm -hmm. right? and that it's consistent with the plan of conservation and development in our opinions. Agreed? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Oh, thanks. All right. Um, other business? Other business, and I think I understand that we have someone who wishes to participate. Um, actually, I guess we should just move to public comment, right? That's where we want to do it under public comment. All right, so we'll move on to number seven public comment of a general matter. Good evening. Introduce Good evening, yourself, Mr. Mr. Chairman. For the record, TJ Donahue of the firm of Killian and Donahue. And I've been before you several weeks ago on, or several months ago on this matter. I'm here as a representative of Maria Sapala, who lives at 38 Marsh Street in Wethersfield. She's here with me as well. And uh, we're before you tonight to once again call attention to the situation which we have at 222 Main Street, where uh, Lucky Lou's bar establishment, a, a, an establishment which is a private enterprise in property owned by the town of Wethersfield. And, and, leased by the Wethersfield Historical Society, where we have a continuing violation of the condition of your special permit, which you granted um, on April 11th, 2016. Uh, there were, it was a, a special permit for sound at that premises, outdoor entertainment music. It had requirements that the, t that the applicant had to comply with town noise ordinances, which they have not. It also had additional requirements of them to stay in compliance with the town and also to provide uh, some sound mitigation measures. The uh, violations remain unabated. The attitude of the, uh, of the owner of the establishment is very disappointing. We've reached out, we provided this uh, commission with uh, some proposals and some information about mitigation of the sound. It's important to note that uh, Ms. Sapala does not seek cessation she seeks compliance she's all she wants is compliance with the regulation there are problems with the enforcement there are problems with you with the understanding of what your sound ordinance is and so uh, uh, attorney lobo who represents lucky lou has written to the town and to me that uh, she's unavailable out of town tonight um, all i want you to know is that we continue to seek compliance we'd like some action of this board at some appropriate time soon to stop the, the violations of the sound ordinance and your special permit. And I do, I do submit that I believe that for continued, for non-compliance of the permit, I think you can yank that permit. And uh, I don't seek that with the absence of client tonight, but I think it's something that we have to look at. The, the other alternative is for us to go to court, which we will 
proceed to do, but that's a long road and it's a, it's a costly road and it's inefficient in, in getting addressing this problem. So we thank you for your attention to them. Can I ask a question? Absolutely, yeah. I didn't want to leave. Have you been in contact with the zoning enforcement officer about this? Uh, I've been in touch with uh, your staff, Peter Gillespie. Uh, I think earlier in the day, the zoning enforcement officer has been involved in it, but uh, I will go there. If you direct me to go there, I'll go there. No, I mean, I, I'm just thinking out loud that if you're trying to get enforcement of the zoning regulations, you would talk to the zoning enforcement officer. We've talked to the, uh, we talked to the town manager. We were referred to your staff. Uh, we wanted to bring it to this commission. I think that this commission would have to make the order to the, that would have to direct their enforcement officer to do it. Uh, we'll go in any order that you suggest, but we've been banging the drum for quite some time without success. Well, I mean, we don't tell the zoning enforcement officer to go out and, you know, find people for putting TVs on their lawn or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think he has his own individual enforcement abilities and probably worth talking to him at least. I'll talk to him. Sure. Thank you. Tom? As I recollect, the last, the, when this issue was brought to our attention a few months ago, that there was the expressed intent or a plan to engage the services of a sound engineer, a, you know, an expert in the area of, of, of uh, noise attenuation to develop uh, a, a plan uh, that would alleviate uh, you know, the, the issue of the excess noise coming from this facility. Uh, what news, what, what's the progress on that, if any? So just, just a quick summary to bring you up to speed today. Uh, the neighbor did uh, retain the services of a, of a sound uh, consultant. Um, we met the um, uh, property owner's attorney uh, with the neighbor's attorney uh, at the site uh, with the sound consultant went over an approach to do some testing. That testing was, I think, subsequently done either the next day or within a couple of days. Uh, a three-page report was generated with some what I, what I thought were reasonable um, suggestions to try and baffle the noise uh, and change the operations a little bit. I think that report was generated on June 12th. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm off by a day or two. That report was provided to the uh, property, uh, the business owner. I keep saying property owner. The town owns the property, uh, and the. Um, business owner's attorney. Um, I have sent uh, my uh, follow-up uh, emails to them three times. Uh, I think the first response to those emails uh, came yesterday or whatever the, the last couple of days. So it's been two months at this point. So um, I specifically advised them to uh, implement one of the basic recommendations, which was to put up a tarp. I think I did that two different times and still have not gotten a, a response as to whether they would be willing to do that or not. So. In, in my experience, in terms of regulatory enforcement, uh, there's when, when, uh, when there are presumed violations, uh, there's usually an official citation or report of, of violations and the respondent is given an opportunity to, uh, to submit and implement a plan, uh, plan of, of development, so to speak, to uh, alleviate or, or to come into compliance. Is that with somewhat in the, is that with, is with that, <coughs> excuse me, is that within the scope of the uh, authority or powers of the zoning enforcement officer? I would. I would hazard a guess to say yes. And has that procedure ever been used? Before? It has been used a couple of times for this property in previous years. Um, um, so this um, new report, um, with its you know basic recommendations, we we felt that the business owner's attorney would be the intermediary and make some progress. But maybe uh, my expectations were too high. So uh, based on. Uh, the comments from uh, Mr. Roberts and your comments, I think maybe tomorrow 
we'll have a sit down with the zoning officer and maybe initiate a more formal approach to this problem. Yeah, because I mean, otherwise we're just going to be doing this dance for another five years. It's unfortunate, you know, yeah, when you is. try and work with an attorney. Especially and, when you identify right. a solution. I don't appreciate being ignored, as you can imagine. I don't think the commission <coughs> appreciates being ignored by Lou. Okay. And, uh, I, I think exactly you ought to be proceeding a little bit more strongly on this one. I, I, have a, I agree with that. And I guess one question is my, my recollection is the town leases to the Historical Society, which in turn leases to the business, I that's, believe. That's correct. Uh, at, at, at some point, it seems to me perhaps the people who, the town entity owning the property and the historical society could be examining their respective rights under the leases if the tenant is not complying. Um, just another thing to think about. And I have talked to the town manager about that, so that is certainly another, uh, another approach to try and get some compliance. I think that having a, you know, a finding of noncompliance by the authorized uh, uh, entity uh, could lay a foundation for any one of a number of, of you know, I I enforcement activities to take place, either through the lease or through the zoning regulations or, or the enforcement of the conditions of the uh, special use permit. Okay. I would... <clears throat> How, quite frankly, would you confirm non-compliance? I don't disagree, but how do you confirm it? Is that something where, you know, we would have to arrange for overtime for the, for the enforcement official to be out there with sound equipment that you have to hire? And I guess where I'm heading here is that costs money. That costs all of us taxpayers to keep this guy in line. I'm not it's, interested in that, Mr. Well, I'm, um, um, I'm going to... I'm going, taxpayer. Well, where I'm heading here is, uh, is there a mechanism by which, you know, okay, we're going to bill them for it, too. You know, okay, you put us in this position. Not only am I going to show up on your doorstep sometime and do it, but I'm going to send you the bill on top of it. I, I'm not going to speak to the billing or the, the you know, the, he can be fined for violation, so that's maybe some way of uh, recouping yeah. any cost. Um, the, the enforcement on uh, good, bad, or indifferent of the noise ordinance is the police department. They have... Um, on numerous occasions documented ex excessive noise levels so it's not there's no dispute as far as I'm concerned that it has been violated at certain points in time and I think the most recent report by the neighbors consultant documented a, a, a noise level that was excessive as well so um, I mean it, we're past the point of it. yeah it's been proven uh, at different points in time and uh, um, so Thoughts, questions for the individual? All right, thank you very much. We're appreciative of your attention to this. Thank you. All righty. Going back to number four, is there other business? And then we'll move on to the minutes. <coughs> Nothing special. Uh, is there a meeting next? We have two, um, we have two applications that just came in, um, which came in under the deadline. So uh, there will be, um, a meeting unless um, something comes up and but so sorry <laughs> are they sheds or campers <laughs> uh, actually one might be no, no sheds did you say RVs you said campers I don't know what the technical term is um, so I'm gonna plan a vacation there you go <laughs> in an RV all right uh, the minutes George. Yeah, they're all right. Make a motion to uh, <laughs> well, I have a, I found a uh, correction that oh I goodness. think needs to be uh, looked at. Uh, page nine, or the top of the page, uh, following the um, the uh, statement of the uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, motion, uh, the. The sentence doesn't make sense as currently stated. If you look at uh, this, the, the um, paragraph that starts out with Commissioner Dean spoke in favor, et cetera, uh, you get down to the second line of that and it says, the give the commission. And I, I don't think that, uh, that 
That's how you really spell relate. Tom. So I think the yeah, it's <laughs> that was verbatim, Tom. If it is verbatim, <laughs> I think there was a, an omission of, of, of in terms of, uh, uh, is, is, of should what, be two of what what two? was heard, because I think the intent was that it would it would the statement would be uh, the conditions contained in the motion gives instead of give the commission the con the control to come back in five years to examine this. So. Uh, with that correction, I would approve the motion to uh, uh, to what? approve. I'm sorry, Tom. I, I didn't understand what the specific. How would you edit it? Well, okay. You would say I would add, I would add following the, if you look at the second line of the uh, of the uh, of the statement second line of the paragraph. It says will be comma the, and then it now reads as the give, and that doesn't really. Right, so makes what? sense. So I would request that we insert uh, the following phrase, um, following the word the, uh, the words conditions contained in the motion, strike the word give, and insert gives to make that plural, mm -hmm. and then continue the sentence as was written. Very, get that, Pete? I think so. Except Sorry. No, I think it should be give. Because <laughs> it refers back to conditions, not to motion. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'll I'll accept that. Leave okay. the word "give" in. Okay. Motion uh, to approve. Not paying correct. attention. Sure. Good. All right. Any Before other man, any other <laughs> any other edits that need to be made? Uh, I've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Do we have enough people here? It looks like we have enough people here to actually vote on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. All right, seven positives. All right, anything else? And just my apologies to the commission for being a few minutes late. That's like you reverting back to the five minutes after seven thing. Apparently, that's the way my clock reads, so. <laughs> All right, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, motion to adjourn. Don't move. All right. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? New record. Collect them up. Hey, Tom. Recycle them. So you took your pink pen back? You want, it? You want one? We have a whole stash of them. I'll, I'll, I'll do, swap you a, a blue one for a pink one. There you go. Mics. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I would have left it on.